Dr. Stockman speaks. Fourth act of Henrik Ibsen's play, An Enemy of the People. Yes, that is part of my new discovery, too. And another part of it is that broad-mindedness is almost precisely the same thing as morality. That is why I maintain that it is absolutely inexcusable in the people's messenger to proclaim day in and day out the false doctrine that it is the masses, the crowd, the compact majority that have the monopoly of broad-mindedness and morality and that vice and corruption and every kind of intellectual depravity are the result of culture just as all the filth that is draining into our baths is the result of the tanneries up at Molendal. And yet, this same people's messenger can go on preaching that the masses ought to be elevated to higher conditions of life. Bless my soul, if the messenger's teaching is to be depended upon, this very raising up the masses would mean nothing more or less than setting them straight way upon the paths of depravity. Happily, the theory that culture demoralizes is only an old falsehood that our forefathers believed in and we have inherited. No, it is ignorance, poverty, ugly conditions of life that do the devil's work. In a house which does not get aired and swept every day, my wife Catherine maintains that the floor ought to be scrubbed as well, but that is a debatable question. In such a house, let me tell you, people will lose within two or three years the power of thinking or acting in a moral manner. Lack of oxygen weakens the conscience and there must be a plentiful lack of oxygen in very many houses in this town. I should think, judging from the fact that the whole compact majority can be unconscientious enough to wish to build the town's prosperity on a quagmire of falsehood and deceit.